just started the third chapter last week. We spent considerable time on the introduction to the, the title of the chapter Yoga of Action, which is known as Karma Yoga. We went into the, the first verse. The first verse is <clears throat> a question being asked by Arjuna because he heard Lord Krishna speaking entire, almost the entire second chapter giving the importance of Sankhya, the knowledge of the higher. So he was pretty confused. He is in a dilemma because he is in a battlefield. He is caught up in a, in a dilemma. Am I to fight this battle or am I to abandon this battle? And when he kept Krishna hearing so eloquently, advising him to, to gain this higher knowledge. So obviously he, he didn't know what is the right thing to do. First of all, he's already in a, in, a, in a chaotic state. His mind is in a neurotic state. Nothing is functioning. Wow. And then Lord Krishna, you know, in, in fact, we did mention this when we did the second chapter. Lord Krishna, when he did, when he spoke with the, he started the Gita with the second chapter. So the first chapter is literally Arjuna's despondency. There's nothing much philosophy there. Is just the, the state of mind of any modern man today fits in exactly to what Arjuna was. Pretty confused. Pretty, pretty lost. So when Krishna spoke, he actually spoke the highest philosophy, knowing well that Arjuna didn't understand a, a word. Knowing well that he was not following anything what was being said. Strange, but yet that's how the truth is. That Arjuna was no way capable of understanding what Krishna spoke. And as I've told you, the second, in fact, the, the, the end portion of the second chapter known as the Sutta Pradnya, we just concluded, is the, the gem of the Gita. He gives, he paints a picture of who is a, a realized person, a, a man of perfection. And you need to be well equipped with the fundamentals of philosophy to be able to fathom what that is, what that state is, much less uh, an ill-prepared student who was not in a mental st steadfastness, he was not in a mental steadiness to, to follow or understand what was being said. So he purposely spoke the highest philosophy only to establish his authority, his superiority or to men to just clarify that man I am not your childhood friend. You have known to be all this while where we did all this mischief together. We stole butter, we did all the nonsense with it. I am not that childhood friend, I am someone else. So he had to establish his stature that Arjuna could surrender to him. And the best way is to speak which nobody will follow you. <laughs> you know, today, if any speaker were to very eloquently speak and perhaps speak in a language or use references or contexts which is not followed by the audience, such a knowledge he has got, so widely read and he is so brilliant because nothing you followed. But if someone where to come down to your level, break it down in a digestible form, in a takeaway. There is a great takeaway when you go to a classroom. If someone puts in the effort, in fact, it is always said, if, the, it is easier, if it is easier for the student to follow, that much more effort the teacher has to put in. It is very difficult for me to just rattle off the Vedic truths. I've just came out of an online class just 10 minutes prior coming here I had the session and we were analyzing a statement and if I were to get into that I guarantee most of you will be blank because it was a different subject matter for a different audience who are prepared for that. So what I'm trying to say is Arjuna couldn't follow. He was in a predicament. So that is what is clarified. The question, in fact, in the first verse, he says, if you consider knowledge superior to action, then why do you, O Keshava, 
engage me in this terrible karma, the terrible deed, the ghor karma of trying to kill his own well wishes, his own kit and kin, his own guru, his own grandsire. I wouldn't get into it because we already covered that. We already did. We did mention that action per se is not right or wrong. It's all determined by the intent, the thought that backs the action. Here he knew that his his relatives and friends and his near and dear were supporting an unrighteous cause. That was none of his reason to find out why they were supporting, but they were an unrighteous cause. So he was fighting a battle to set right or establish righteousness, to set right the adharma has taken over. There was total anarchy in that country. So as a leader, he had to set right dharma. So he was only trying to fight dharma. <coughs> So he didn't understand that. He lost that vision of that purpose why he first of all got into this battle. So action per se is not good or bad. It depends on what is it that backs the action. What is the intent that backs it. That determines an action is either good or bad or neutral. Okay. So actually the question some uh, gets into the second verse. It concludes the uh, question in two verses in fact and the third verse Krishna answers. So when you get to the second second verse, you you know he doesn't understand, he's completely lost. Arjuna is completely lost. He won't see this help. Okay? So let's chant the second verse twice together. So please join me in the chant. Okay. Vyamishreneva Vakena Bodhim Mohaya Siva me. Tadekam vadanishchitya ye nashre yoha mapnuyam vyamishre neva vakena bodhim mohaya siva me tadekam vadanishchitya ye nashre yoha mapnuyam with an apparently perplexing speech, you confuse as it were my understanding. Tell me with certainty that one way by which I may attain the, uh, the highest, the supreme, Shreya. Vyamishreneva Vakena. You seem to be speaking perplexed. I am perplexed because you are speaking such language of confusion. In fact, that is what a guru should do. The job of a guru is to confuse a student. You know why? So if a student is confused, the teacher is doing his job well. It is said so. It is not my creation. It's not my imagination. That's how a teacher teaches, is to confuse the student. A typical Vedic verse, if I'm, I, don't, I can't get a direct reference of that verse, where it comes from. He says, I know it, not that I do not know it, not that I do not know it, I know it. Next verse, he moves on. So when a student is listening to a master who has surrendered to him with complete faith and devotion that he is someone who knows the truth, he has not just knows it, he also has the capacity to, to teach me the knowledge. And here a guru says, I know it, I do not know it. Not that I do not know it, I know it. Now do you know it or not? Huh? Please make up your mind, teacher. I do not know whether you know it or not. Am I to continue or am I to find another teacher? And when they say, what is, where is, where is that divine truth? It is far, it is near. Tadhure tadvantike tadantarasya sarvasya. This is the description of Brahman God. Where is God? Tadhure tadvantike. It is far, it is outside, it is inside. Uh, where is he? It's outside, inside. Where means outside, inside. Where is he? 
it is near it is far is it far or near it is near it is far it is far for an extroverted seeker it is very near for one who is well qualified who is not developed he needs to go great journeys to see god in fact muhammad said this to his to people who he saw who were going on camels back towards mecca through that sand in the desert so when he saw them on the camels back he said what you are seeking is closer than the neck of your camel they were on a camels back they were going to mecca and he told them what you are seeking is closer than the neck of your camel what does it mean they were going to have a glimpse of the lord to have that spiritual experience to which he said it is right within me so one who has the capacity to discover it realize it within he would not need to take a journey outward it's an inward journey why do you need to take an outward journey it's right within you but since you lack it you need to go and search for it where everywhere so i should not lose my focus what is the statement i made a little earlier confused now you may be confused why is he talking all of this i am not gone out of my context a teacher speaks a language of contradiction with the with the only intention to make you think so that you are able to engage your faculty of reasoning you think along with him a teacher should not spoon feed you in fact the very truth was never taught Do you know that? Do you know how was the truth taught? How was how were these teachings taught? Any idea? You no, know, so certainly when you when a student went up to the master, just like you have come with a uh, with a desire to learn the Gita, so also in those Vedic times. Um, a student went up to the master to the intent to learn the higher values but what was that methodology a teacher used to teach this knowledge and you get the the cue which i already said a teacher in the olden vedic times never taught it all came much later question and answer alarm apro when the teacher started teaching but the first teacher never taught practical knowledge the teacher only help the teacher gave to the student was neti neti means not that so they gave a direction for the student to think and contemplate it is the job of the student to figure out what that meant and he contemplated he gave it an original thought he came to a conclusion he went up with great reverence to the master and asked am i that because the only advice the, the teacher gave was tat tvamasi that the word you are the truth what is that what is that tat so this fellow had to to dig deep he didn't have any grounds to start his inquiry but he inquired that what is that am i this body am i the mind am i the intellect am i the vasanas am i the causal body what am i what is this trait what is that he is talking about what is that what is the characteristics of truth and when he said i am that what is that and they went about introspecting contemplating came to conclusions and they wanted to just get that verification the teacher's confirmation is this is it that and the only help teacher gave was neti not that ha huh. all the six months of effort he just said no then what happened the student had to go back and reflect again in a completely entirely different direction a different line of thought 
and come to a, a conclusion. He went up to the master again and asked, am I this? The only help he gave was Nedi. This drama went on for seven, eight times. The ninth time the student didn't go back to the teacher. Once he got it, he did not need any more confirmation from anyone. He clinched it. He got it. So if you want to get to the truth, the only way is to let you figure it out. You figure it out what the truth is. I will not help you. The only help I will tell you is not this way. Think original. Think another way. Take another way. That's all I can say. But then as time passed on, the quality of the students deteriorated. They didn't have the capacity to reflect in that, explore, plunge into that unknown and figure out what that was. Then the students realized needed some more help. So they started actually explaining themselves. So those explanations were the Upanishads. And then came the other scriptural textbooks and Gita is in fact an explanation of that one single aphorism that from I see 701 verse explaining that three innocuous meaning seemingless meaningless words that from I see the entire Gita is telling you what you are that thou art no spoon beating so still throughout the Gita you find there is a language of contradiction okay so but there is no reason for Krishna, Arjuna to rather to believe that Krishna is confusing him. Even though they do speak the language of contradiction with a purpose, there is no reason the teacher will confuse you purposely. It is just meant to drive home a message. But when he's, therefore he says, with an apparently perplexing speech you confuse me, as it were. You as it were means, I do not seem to follow what you are getting at, you seem to confuse me. Tell me with certainty, which part? Tell me that one way. Now, who is it that is told with certainty what to do? Think carefully before you answer. Who is it that is told with certainty what to do? Every month. How can you say one who is ready will be told what to do? No, I want to know the ra rationale behind it. Not that you are wrong, I am just trying to understand it. Would you think Arjuna is in that situation where he is ready to decide? where he has the clarity of thought to take the right course of action? Yes or no? He is waiting for the Guru's instructions to clearly tell him what to do. Which, mean, which means? He is confused. So when somebody is told what to do with certainty means that person has no clarity of thought. He can't think. Only to a person who can't think, he is told what to and what not to. So, do's and don'ts are given to people to, in fact they say, do's and don'ts are not designed for humans. Why do you think? Analyze that statement for me anyone? Do's and don'ts are not designed for human beings. You don't mold people with do's and don'ts. Especially when you bring up children. Today when anybody is being advised, today children are be only being told what to and what not to. That is a very fundamental principle of education you are violating. You should never ever tell a child what to and what not to. What's wrong by doing that? What is wrong in telling a child what to and what not to? Sudhakar Garu, today the senior is not there, so I can just, only junior is there. 
అదే కదా జూనియర్ కదా రైట్ వై సార్ బై ఇట్ కమ్స్ సో నాచురలీ టు జస్ట్ టెలింగ్ ఎ చైల్డ్ వాట్ టు అండ్ వాట్ నాట్ టు యూ బెటర్ డోంట్ డూ ఇట్ యూ బెటర్ డూ ఇట్ ఇట్స్ అన్ అథారిటేటివ్ డిక్టేటర్షిప్ ఇంపోజిషన్ ఇస్ అన్ ఇట్ సార్ that is how we have seen if you are objective and listen look around that's how these is how molding is going on in every home because of possessiveness okay but what's wrong with that what's wrong with such an approach sorry you oh, wanting anything wrong ma uh, there's nothing right with it uh, please understand that first <laughs> sorry ma the child would lose his ability to discern and decide on its own merit it has you are not giving the freedom for a child to make a choice you are doing all the thinking for the child you are not making a child you are not helping the child grow perhaps you can help to analyze the for the child these are the possibilities if you choose this these are the consequences you choose that if i were you i would do this but its choice is yours that is where a wise counsel will prevail over the child because you have only given an opportunity and given the empowerment to the child to make the right choice and if you don't allow the child to do now the child will be in no position as he grows up to make that choice because he has never been exercising this thinking faculty is always in a dilemma and always has got orders what to do in where they say do's and don'ts are designed for animals not for humans very true so true so it is very unnatural to be tell me decisively what to do am i to fight or am i to pick up the geeta and read oh those days no geeta no pick up something else and read arjuna geeta is a conversation between krishna and arjuna so where is the geeta so am i to pick up a, a, a scripture or am i to fight tell me certainty he doesn't understand tell me by which way i will attain the highest the the word he uses is shreya the word shreya means the path to one's own betterment one zone in fact part of the higher the spiritual path one zone spiritual evolution is known as the shreya and the opposite of that is shreya huh shreya prayas prayas which is the path of the pleasant you are going which is exactly the which which brings about your own degradation your own downfall all you want to do is just to have maja in life enjoy that's all what else is life meant for just have maja isn't it so all your effort is towards that so either you are seeking the path of so arjuna is very clear you tell me that which is in the in my own betterment so in the two verses the question comes very clear do you consider path of knowledge or path of action tell me with certainty what should i do are you all with me sir shri bhagavan uvacha loke smin dvividha nishtha pura prokta maya nagha jnana yoge na sankhyanam కర్మయోగేన యోగినాగవాచ లోకేస్మిన్విధానిష్ఠరా ప్రోక్తమయానఘనయోగేన సాఖ్యాన కర్మయోగేన యోగినాటిఫుల్ వర్సెస్ if you want to know the caliber of the author of a book because you will find hundreds of commentaries of gita out there 
if you want to know the caliber of the author of the book this could be one of the verses to check to what depth that person has gone another reference is perhaps chapter 2 verse 6 verse uh, 53 and 64 you just read these three verses don't write down because then you are checking the caliber of the author that is not your business i'm going to try to tell you so please write down chapter 2 verse 53 64 and then chapter 3 verse 3 because here the message is so tricky it, it is again contradiction no greater contradiction than this verse not nobody will have a clue you not even you don't even know to what depth to what extent an author has gone in bringing the or have done justice to the to the verse this is one of the verses now the translation reads He says, "The blessed Lord said." So Krishna is answering the question asked by Arjuna. In this world, there is a two-fold path. O oh, anagha, anagha means you are a sinless one. Means you are a pure fellow man. You are a very nice fellow. So there is a love and affection between Krishna and Arjuna. Very fond, fondness for each other, and that relationship is very necessary for any learning. a love a lot of love they had for each other o oh, anagha o oh, sinless one so in this world there's a twofold path the path of knowledge for the sankhyas which is the contemplative and the path of action for the yogis the active jnana yogena sankhyanam karma yogena yoginam there is a twofold path in this world there's a twofold path पुरा प्रोक्त पुरा प्रोक्त मीन्स इट इज बीन सेट बिफोर एज आई सेट बिफोर ही इज नॉट सेट दिस बिफोर आई टेल यू विथ सर्टन इंट्री डोंट लुक एट मी लाइक दैट नो डाउट इन दैट मै आई एम टेलिंग यू विथ सर्टन इंट्री ही हैज नॉट टोल्ड इट बिफोर एंड येट ही सेज पुरा प्रोक्त as i have said before what is he talking about see throughout the scriptures there is always a reference to the gurus of yore the gurus of past including krishna when he says it has been said before i am only repeating what has been said there is nothing new about it man why are you asking me so when he says it is been said by the gurus he is referring to that famous guru shishya parampara the preceptor disciple lineage which preserved this knowledge which is one of the means of acquiring knowledge so are you following are you following sir sastro there are four ways of acquiring knowledge any idea what are the four ways of acquiring knowledge munda vandichanga naalada ninga you have to invent come up with something the four for one of the ways is tradition you learn from the predecessors you have what has been laid down by the gurus of past that parampara so you keep quoting them you refer to them the sanskrit word for that is prahuhu prahuhu means something which has been said quoting them so the tradition so that's one of the means that is known as agama agama means referring to something which has been laid down referring to the shastras referring to the scriptures the wisdom of gurus that's what krishna is saying it has been said man in this world there is a twofold path as i have said before so what other three 
in fact there are four means as I've said the four means of acquiring knowledge first is pratyaksha pratyaksha means direct perception where you have experienced it yourself sometimes uh, you could have been right at that corner of the road where you could have seen the accident happening right in front of your nose right ahead of you it happened there so perhaps you could become the witness and say hey, no no this fellow was responsible for the accident not him you have seen it through your own eyes you don't investigate or infer through the, the accident there is no what do you call you don't study the crime scene or you don't in, go through the the postmortem of all the things and infer this could have happened no 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 direct perception pratyaksha the second way of learning knowledge is through anumana through inference you don't see it directly but you infer it what do you infer how do you infer for example if you see far away there is thick black smoke coming what do you infer there is fire do you see fire you don't see fire but you have learned through inference there are certain qualities of a person by the qualities of a person you can describe the character you don't know him or you don't you have not understood him but you see certain glimpses or certain expressions or certain qualities by those qualities you say oh this must be this must be it you infer through a quality you don't know him but you infer oh he seems to be very short tempered person a very arrogant person i just so got a glimpse of his emotion you are describing the person you don't know him you're inferring it a little extension to that concept so second means is through inference the third is through upamana best way to remember upamana is upma a little additional rendu alphabet add panninga upamana and upma lendu upamana varum enna sir shiva upma if you forget it upma podunga pakkathile bracket la உப்மான என்ன சாரி உப்பம் உப்மான உப்பம் சொல்றேன் உப்ப உப்ப என்ன ஆ உபமான உபமான கம்பேரிசன் த்ரூ எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் சிமிலிஸ் எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் மெட்டஃபார்ஸ் தேர் இஸ் சம்திங் பீங் கம்பேர்ட் யூ வில் கிராஸ் திஸ் mire of delusion just like a boat crosses that the sea of existence that statement one will cross this mire of delusion just like a boat crosses the the treacherous waters now what is the comparison here is it this methodology is known as upamana so i'm trying to convey something with an example you may not follow you will only follow when you understand the example so you will have to break down the example to understand the concept the one of the statements we were discussing just now as i said i had this online session there is a statement which we analyze from the 9th chapter of the gita where he said all of this world is pervaded by me in an unmanifest form 